Why go on, boom, ba clap, woman, boom, ba clap, gal? Charm, I am, like, that's not even English, man. I'm simply saying, hey, what's up? Why can't what's you just say on? what's up? Like, hey, what's up? I'm Tara. What's up? I'm Charmus. Welcome to another week of GB Weekly. GB Weekly. You guys remember last week? Did you see last week what happened to this guy? Did you see him cry you on see? TV? So everyone thinks that she was like a boss during it, but really what she did is applied a little Carmex, a little chapstick. So her lips weren't burning, her face wasn't burning. Sharp. I was dying. I warned you and said, hey, I've got a college degree. I think this is gonna work. Do you wanna oh. try it? And he's like, no, nah. no, I'm good. No, I'm good. I don't no. need any. I just want an authentic, real experience. I didn't want to cheat. You like wanted to some cry. People. You wanted to cry. It was a little rough. It was a little rough. Hey, we seen some houses last week. First, we see my boy Grady attempt it. He thinks that it's not hot. I'm pretty sure his face is on fire too. Look at Grady eating this wing, getting smacked, thinking he's doing well. He's not doing that well, Grady. We see you, bro. All right, and then next up, we had the Brust House. I was out there watching them watch me eat wings and laugh at me. Joke was on them. I got a video of them, and poor Molly. She just could not handle the heat. But I'm proud of you for trying, Molly. Hey, last but not least at the matching house, we had Brandon. Look at Brandon. Are you good? Why it hurt? Why your mouth hurt? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hottest wings that should be in there. I ain't gonna lie, they're a little hot though. <laughs> <laughs> if for hottest wings, it's not that hot, they're a little hot. That's what You're good though, right? <laughs> There's nothing, just a one. Through it, bro. He can't feel his lips. <laughs> <laughs> I can't feel my tongue. Bro, I can't feel my tongue. <laughs> Man, 
that was pretty fun to watch. Proud of that guy for at least trying. But hey, if you guys thought that we were being sissies last week, you're in for a treat this week because this week's edition of What's in the Box? What's in the Box? Y'all aren't gonna handle it. So what you gotta do, you're gonna go out, open that box, grab your phones because we wanna see you posting on IG whether or not you're a sissy. Because I don't think they can do it. I don't even think they Travis They cannot do it. Travis won't even do it this week. I probably won't do it, but make sure you tag Bayside GB dot HS on the ground and we'll see you in What's in the Box? What's in the Box?
Hey, how you like them apples? What was in the box? Was that delicious? I'm pretty sure it's still, still tuck, stuck in your seat. Make sure you get it out. It's so gross. I can't wait to see your guys' stories. We won't be posting one because we're probably too big a sissies nah. to try it. But when you guys post on your IG, be sure to follow us because two weeks ago, we did a sweet giveaway and my girl, Hope Davidson, Hope Davidson. at the Brush House, walked away with a free pair of custom vans, which I'm going to drop oh. off as soon as they get delivered. She custom designed them herself. They're pretty sick. Can't wait to see them. Congrats, Hope. We'll be doing more giveaways. Hey, right now, if everyone can just relax, um, put your phones down, make sure you focus in. We're going from a time of fun to a time of faith. Open up your Bibles to Matthew 16, and let's pray together as we hear God's word. Father, we thank you so much for your word, for what you're doing in your word, what you're doing through your word, what you're teaching us through your word. I pray that what happens around uh, these coffee tables, what happens around these kitchen counters, what happens around these fire pits, Father, it's everlasting, but it's not only for right now, tonight, but it is perpetuated to tomorrow, to, take, to next week, to when they go off to college and forever. So, Father, as, as we look at the life of Peter, I pray that that word is hidden in our heart that we may not sin against you. Father, I pray that these young people grow closer to one another week after week. We need you desperately and we love you. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so check this out. So I was taking, I was in my first year at USC, University of Sierra College. That's right, go Wolverines. I was in my first year and I was taking this math class and I was really struggling in the class, like really struggling. I had a long Wednesday, early morning class, Thursday morning, walked through the door and I know you guys know this feeling. The moment when you walk through the door of a class and you immediately think something is wrong. That's right, walked through the door and immediately I knew that I forgot there was a test that day. And I knew I hadn't studied for that test. I'm already struggling in the class. I sit down and I'm absolutely sweating bullets because I know I'm gonna fail this test. And so before I even put my pen to my paper, I am praying to God, God, please help me get a 50% on this test. Like I'm, I'm like, there's no chance. I'm even going to get a 50%. There's about 20 questions on it, four pages. I immediately look at page one, question one, and immediately think to myself, oh my gosh, I'm screwed. I'm literally screwed for this test. So I try my best on the first page. I flip it over to the second page. Second page, I literally don't answer one question. Like I don't even put a pin to the paper. I'm, I'm like, I have no shot at this. I probably answer out of the 20 questions I don't know, probably about nine of them. Like, I don't even have a shot at 50%, right? I answered, I tr attempted nine of them. Doesn't mean I got all nine of them wrong. I'm mad, I'm frustrated. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fail this class. Show up to class the next day, uh, uh, sorry, the next week, walk into class, and I'm right, here we go. What, like, what am I gonna get, right? Uh, I sit down, teacher puts uh, my paper on my test. I look at the test. 67%. Now look, I know, listen, some of you nerds out there, okay, I know y'all are like, what, Colton, that's embarrassing. I know it's embarrassing, all right? But in that time, I was, you can see the smile on my face right now, I was juiced, man, 67%. Come to find out that as I'm looking through the test, I flip it over to page two, and at the top of the page, it says 100% on this page. And then I'm like, what, like, what the heck? How did I get 100%? In the instructions on page number two, it says this, do not answer anything on this page for full credit. Boom, baby, are you kidding me? Like I planned that out, right? No, I didn't. I totally skipped every single question. But here's the reason why I tell you guys that right now is because I'm gonna ask you a question. And as I ask this question, here's what I believe. I believe that every single person on planet Earth has to answer this question at some point in their life. Here's the question I want to ask you. 
Who is Jesus to you? You see, I believe that every single person, this is a question that we don't get to skip out on. This isn't a question that we get to go next page. This is not a question that we get to go, ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about it and do it later. No, I think that every single one of us has to answer the question, who is Jesus to you? And here's what I want to say to you as you sit in your living rooms in your backyard right now, is I want to say this. We're not looking for the church answer here. I'm not looking for the church answer. And I'm speaking on behalf of the leaders that are sitting around you right now. They're amazing human beings. They're not looking for the church answer as well. What do I mean by that? Is that I'm not, we're not looking for answers that you know up here, but don't believe in here. We're not looking for that. We're not interested in that. That's why this is important. That's why these conversations are important as you guys sit around it. Is you guys talk about real life. It's okay if you disagree. It's okay if you don't believe. But let's be honest about where we're at. But here's what I'm saying. I'm saying when you answer that question, who is Jesus to you? Student that's grown up in church, who's been a part of church your whole life. I'm asking that for you to not give the answer, yeah, man, Jesus died for my sins. Yeah, 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 he's my savior. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he is God, right? Like those answers that you know appear, but you don't believe in here. I'm asking you seriously, what do you believe when I ask you the question, who is Jesus to you? Because I had to answer that question as well. And when I was in your shoes, when I was a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior in high school, guess what? I didn't really take that question too serious. I didn't really, even though I knew it, I didn't believe it in my heart. As you see, I, when I was in high school, man, I tried to live a good life. And, I, you know, I didn't go to parties. I didn't drink. I didn't sleep around. I didn't smoke. I didn't do drugs. I didn't cuss. And I tried to do all these things. But if I'm going to be honest, and if I look back, and if I look back at high school, and if someone were to press me and say, Colton, who is Jesus to you? Really, Colton. As you're sitting here, you're junior, who is Jesus? You know, honestly, I probably would have said these things. I probably would have said, Jesus to me is my parents' faith. Jesus to me is the person that we talk about a lot of, uh, uh, in our household, around, around the dinner table, uh, at church. We go to church a lot, but th that's who Jesus is. Why? Because it was something that I knew, but I didn't necessarily believe. Why do I say that? It's because I say that because even though I was in high school and people would come up to me and say, Colton, you are different. You don't drink. You don't smoke. You don't do drugs. You don't coast, cuss. Like, I want what you have. I want what you have. I want to experience what you have. I want Jesus in my life. Colton, what would you say to me? You know what I would have said? I would have said, hey, let's go talk to my dad. Hey, let's go talk to my youth pastor. Let's go talk to them. Why? Because when I was your age, man, if I were to be really honest, my relationship with Jesus was not my own. It was not something I really, truly, with all of my heart, believed in. It was more so something that I knew in my head and I wanted to honor my mom and dad. But if someone were to really press me, my relationship with Jesus was probably really on shaky grounds. It was probably really in shadow waters. I had a relationship with Jesus, but it wasn't real. It wasn't intimate. It wasn't alive and vibrant. And I think a lot of you are probably feeling the same way. And as we sit there and we have this conversation, there's probably a lot of you are starting to feel those same feelings. You say, man, I want to live a good life. I want to do good things, but I feel conflicted. I want to follow Jesus, but I feel conflicted because the world is pulling me in a different direction. I'm starting to do things I know I probably shouldn't be doing. I'll probably do things that I probably know in my head that are probably not the right thing, but I feel this tug in my heart because I know Christianity is not cool and I feel that these friends of mine won't accept me. Why? Because I believe in Jesus and because of the things that Jesus says that they're not going to accept me if I live that sort of lifestyle. Can I kind of play the middle, kind of play in between and you feel conflicted in your life? And if you were to be honest and you'd sit here and say, man, like who is Jesus to me? Maybe if some of you were honest, you'd say, man, Jesus is someone I, I talk about on Wednesday nights. And that's probably the extent of it. If some of you were to be honest, man, Jesus to me is just what I grow up on Sundays. We go as a family and that's who Jesus is to me. Jesus to me is maybe he's just someone that guides my life. Like when I open up the Bible sometimes, I kind of follow his teachings and try to follow in the ways of Jesus as best as I can. 
And here's why that question is so important. And I believe that every single person has to answer this question. Here's why it's so important. Because your answer, here's the big idea. Your answer determines your actions. The way that you answer that question will determine the actions of your whole entire life. It won't guide just the way that you live. It will guide the way that you talk to your parents. It will guide the way that you interact with the people to your left and right. It will guide the way that you talk to your friends at school. It will guide and lead you in the way that you hold yourself around others who you do and don't know. It will change your life the way that you answer that question. Who is Jesus to you? When we pick up in the story of Peter, and up until this point, we talked about how he encountered Jesus for the very first time last week. And at this point in Peter's life, in Matthew chapter 16, Peter has seen Jesus raise a dead girl to life. He's seen Jesus heal a man of leprosy. He's seen Jesus feed the 5,000. He sat around a fire pit with Jesus and had conversations with him. He begins to know the teaching and conversations that begin to take place. And as Jesus is sitting there with the disciples, here's a powerful encounter that Peter has. It says this in verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his, his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied this, some say John the Baptist, Others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. You know what the disciples are saying? He's saying, hey, Jesus, people are talking about you, but they don't really believe in you like we believe in you. They hear the things that you're doing. They hear the things, uh, the miracles that you may be performing. But guess what? Jesus, you're just a man. That's what they're saying. You're nothing special. You're not from heaven. I know you may be saying you're the son of God, you're the son of man, you may have that language that you, you, you don't speak to people here on earth, just here on earth, but you speak to your heavenly father, like, I think people think that you're just a man, because as they looked at, they, they mentioned John, and Elijah, and Jeremiah, and yes, all those people are blessed by God, and hear from God, but at the end of the day, they aren't the Messiah, they are just men, you know, not just then, but even now, you know what? People have a lot of opinions about Jesus. I don't know if you realize that, but you know, people think that maybe Jesus was just a good man. When you look back at history and you open up the Bible, that Christians are kind of kind of crazy to sell their whole lives out for him because maybe he was just a good man. You know what else people believe? People believe maybe he was just a prophet. Maybe he just spoke on God's behalf. Didn't really die, uh, die and be raised to life. Like that's kind of crazy, right? Maybe, you know, you know what us people believe? People believe that Jesus was made up. He's fake. He's kind of a historical figure, and we can take the parables and the things that he teaches. And I kid you not, I'm not stuttering when I say this. There was someone at my school, a professor, that thought, and I'm not stuttering, that Jesus was a mushroom. Like, that's kind of crazy. This person was probably on too many mushrooms, if you know what I'm saying, right? Like, people have lots of different opinions about who Jesus is. But here's what I want to say to you students. Do not let culture or what someone says about Jesus change your belief in Jesus. Hear me very clearly. Do not let culture, what social media says, what you read on the internet, what a professor says, change your beliefs in Jesus. Hear me when I say this. Don't let me, as I sit here on this camera, don't let mom and dad completely change and sway your beliefs in who Jesus is. Why? Because if we begin to start listening to the people on our left or right and they completely change our opinion one way and completely change our opinion the exact opposite, guess what? That relationship with Jesus at the end of the day is superficial and shallow. I'll never forget when I was sitting in a humanities class and we were talking about Christianity and person after person began to raise their hand and recount their experience about how I grew up a Christian, but then all of a sudden, someone brought up this point about the Bible, and I decided I wasn't Christian anymore. That someone, that someone began to raise their hand and say, yeah, someone, I was talking with someone, and they brought up this point of view about Jesus, yeah, I'm no longer a Christian. Or someone brought up, yeah, there were some things that I knew growing up, I believed in Jesus, but all of a sudden, uh, I started reading more, and there's many things that I disagreed with, and so I'm no longer a Christian. 
Hear me when I say this. There's people that will say a lot of things about Jesus, but do you experience him for yourself? Are you encouraged? Are you challenged? Are you prompted in your own heart to open up God's word and press in and say, God, I know what the world is saying. I know what these people are saying about Jesus, but God, who do I think that you are? Because Jesus asked this very same question to Peter. After he asked the question, who do the people say I am? In verse 15, it says this. He says, but what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter says these profound words. He says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Messiah means anointed one. It means you are, he is the perfect one that was to come and be the sacrifice for all our sins. Now, the disciples at that time didn't necessarily know what that meant. They more so probably thought that the, the, the Jews were going to be delivered under Roman rule. Maybe not so much that this person is going to come die and have eternal life, and that's where our victory is going to come from. But Peter, as he's sitting in this moment, he's saying, you are the Messiah. You're not just a man. You're not what, just what people say you are. You're more than that. You are the Messiah. You are the Savior of our world, of our lives. I believe in that. And so much so, Peter believes it. You know why? It's not just something he knows up here. It's something he believes in his heart. Why? Because as we fast forward in Peter's life, he ends up dying for this very cause. Believing that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is everything that he says he was. And here's the big question I want to ask you, students. Do you believe, do you believe that Jesus is the Messiah or is he just a man? Now hear me when I say that, not just something in your head, but what do you feel in your heart? Do you believe it in your heart that he's the Messiah, that he's the savior of your world, that because he died for your sins, that you will have everlasting life? Or is he a man that you follow? The teachings and the principles that he lives by. And when you show up here on Wednesday nights, the things that we talk about Jesus and the way that he conducted himself and he stand up for the oppressed and the hurting and the, and the lonely and the isolated and he stand up for them. Yeah, I believe in that. That's a good thing, right? That's good things to follow and believe in. But do you believe it in something so much more? That he is the Messiah. That he saved you, that he died for your sins so you could everlasting life. Because I asked you that question, because here, who is Jesus to you? And Jesus is asking the very same question for you. Who do you say Jesus is? Who is Jesus in your life? Because the way that you answer that question, guess what? It determines your actions every single day. Do you believe it, students? Because if we can get that through our head, we understand that this, that you spend your time on things that you love. Understand this, you spend your time on things that you love. That when you think about back to this quarantine season, let's be honest, a lot of us aren't doing much. We're not playing sports as much as we normally play. We're obviously not going to school right now, but you spend time on things that you love. When you look back at this season, how much time did you spend opening up your Bible and spending time with Jesus? How much time did you put on worship music in your bedroom alone and spend time with Jesus? How much time did you spend thinking about Jesus and what the word of God says rather than scrolling through social media? Don't you think that if we really believe that Jesus is the Messiah, don't you think it would change the way that we spend our time? Don't you think it would change the way how we interacted with our friends? Don't you think it would change the way how we interact with mom and dad? Don't you think it would change the way that we interact with, with the people, our coaches and people on our sports teams? Yeah, our actions would look greatly different. Those profound words, as Peter says this, you are the Messiah. Verse 17, Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my, my Father in heaven, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Students, 
when we come to this place of believing that Jesus is the Messiah and he's someone that I just don't follow his teachings. It's not just something I talk about on Wednesdays and Sundays. No, I believe in it with all of my heart. I serve Jesus. I worship Jesus. I adore Jesus. When you get to that place, guess what? It doesn't matter culture. It doesn't matter people's opinions. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter what you see on the internet. Just as Jesus saying, there is nothing on heaven and earth that will change the way that you view him if your foundation is built on the rock. That not even hell itself will overcome and shake your opinion of Jesus. But that only comes to a place of you spending time and coming to that conclusion on your own. And so here's my question for you students as you fill in the blank. As you head off into groups right now, here's the fill in the blank I want you to do. Jesus is what? You fill in the blank. And that's where I want the conversation to take place. If Jesus is something that's not real in your life, that's okay. Be real about it. Let's talk about it. If you really believe that Jesus is your master, Lord, and Savior, go ahead and fill in that blank. Let's talk about it. But wherever you may be, whatever you may be feeling or thinking, I want you to know that we're glad that you're here. Jesus loves you just as you are and that he wants to spend time with you. But students, if we're here in a place and saying, man, I believe and love Jesus with all of my heart, then our actions should follow. Because the way that you answer that question determines the way that you act and live within your own life. Thanks for tuning in, students. Have a great time in group. We love you. Fill in that blank. Enjoy group time.